the creature that killed the giant megalodon may still be living in our oceans. For 20 million years, a monstrous shark called the megalodon lived in the world's oceans. Then suddenly, without explanation, the 18-meter-long super predator disappeared, forcing thousands of scientists to wrestle with the mystery of this disappearance. It is a piquant piece of ancient history that has inspired many books, documentaries, and blockbuster films. Some like to imagine that this bloody, death-hungry monster is still alive today, lurking somewhere out there in the deep, mysterious depths. Is it really so? What was the Megalodon really like? Besides being the largest fish in the world, the Megalodon may have been the largest marine predator that ever existed. Basilosauridae and Pliosauridae may have been just as big as this one. It preyed on fish, baleen whales, toothed whales such as the ancestral forms of modern sperm whales, dolphins, killer whales, and sirens such as dugons and manatees, as well as seals. The young ones probably were looking for smaller prey, while the adults hunted the larger whales. To catch prey the size of a whale, a megalodon must have been able to open its mouth wide. It is estimated that its jaw opens from 2.7 to 3.4 meters wide, which is enough to swallow two adult people side by side. These jaws were covered with 276 teeth. Studies reconstructing the force of a shark's bite show that it may have been one of the most powerful predators that ever existed. In humans, the force of the bite has been measured, which is about 1.317 newtons, while great white sharks can bite with a force of 18.216 newtons. Researchers estimated that the megalodon could bite with a force of between 108.514 and 182.201 newtons. Mature megalodons probably had no predators. However, newly born juveniles may have been vulnerable to other large predatory sharks, such as the great hammerhead shark, whose habitats are believed to have overlapped with the megalodon. Megalodon was first described in 1835 by the American naturalist, geologist, and teacher born in Switzerland, Louis Agassiz, who named the species Carcharodon megalodon. Under this scientific name, the megalodon was known until the late 1990s when a growing group of scientists assigned it to the genus Carcharocles. Although some paleontologists argue that the megalodon and modern white sharks evolved within the same lineage, others place the megalodon in the lineage of origin of megalodon sharks, whose origins date back to the Cretaceous period. In most reconstructions, the megalodon looks like a giant great white shark, but it is now considered incorrect. The megalodon probably had a much shorter nose or rostrum compared to a great white shark with a more flat, almost squashed jaw. Like the blue shark, it had very long pectoral fins to withstand its weight and size. In many reconstructions, the megalodon looks like a larger version of the great white shark because for a long time people thought they were related, explains scientist Emma Bernard. Now we know that's not true and the megalodon actually comes from a different shark line, the last member of which was the megalodon. The oldest definitive ancestor of the megalodon is the Atodus obliquus shark, dated 55 million years old, which had grown to about 10 meters in length. However, it is believed that the evolutionary story of this shark dates back to Cretilamna appendiculata, which is 105 million years old, which makes the line of megalodon older than 100 million years. As we found more and more fossils, we realized that the ancestor of the great white shark lived next to the megalodon. Some scientists think they may have even competed with each other, says Emma Bernard. Megalodon was adapted to warm tropical and subtropical places around the world. This species was so widespread that megalodon teeth were found on all continents except Antarctica. We can find many of their teeth on the east coast of North America, along the coast and at the bottom of the creeks and rivers of North Carolina, South Carolina and Florida, explains Emma Bernard. This is probably partly related to the age of the species, but also to the fact that they can easily be found on the seafloor, making it possible for collectors to dive for them. They are also quite common along the coast of Morocco and in some parts of Australia. They can even be found in Great Britain near walton on the Nays, Essex. Although in Great Britain, they are very rare and generally of low quality. 
The geographic distribution of the Megalodon expanded throughout the Miocene, but decreased in the Pliocene as population decreased. Initially, scientists thought the decrease was due to fluctuations in ocean temperature, which was due to climate change. Possibly it was caused by the closure of the sea routes separating North America and South America about 3 million years ago. It diverted ocean currents and caused other changes in ocean circulation. By 2016, studies showed that the geographic distribution of megalodons did not increase significantly during the warm periods and decreased imperceptibly during the cold periods. That in turn suggested that the extinction of the species did not depend solely on climate change. However, there is one thing. Previously, it was thought that the megalodon became extinct towards the end of the Pliocene, 2.6 million years ago, when a planet entered the phase of global cooling. It is unknown exactly when the last megalodon died, but the new evidence suggests that it was at least 3.6 million years ago. Scientists believe that up to a third of all large marine animals, including 43% of turtles and 35% of seabirds, went extinct because of decreasing temperatures and a reduction in the number of organisms in the base of the food chain, leading to species collision. The cooling of the planet may have contributed to the extinction of the megalodon in different ways. Since adult sharks were dependent on tropical waters, the drop in ocean temperature may have led to significant habitat loss. This could also have led to the extinction of megalodon prey, or adaptation to cooler waters and relocation to places where sharks could not follow. It is believed that the megalodon gave birth to its young, not far from the shore. These shallow coastal waters may have served as breeding grounds for the offspring, protecting them from predators that were hiding in open water, such as the larger toothed whales. When the ice formed at the poles and sea levels dropped, these grounds would have been destroyed. Another reason, as scientists believe, could be the relatives of the megalodon. Great white sharks first appeared on Earth about 6 million years ago, and at first, they were confined to the Pacific Ocean. Only 2 million years later, these predators have spread successfully around the world. Traveling from ocean to ocean, researchers speculate that great whites may have invaded megalodon territory by overtaking the young ones as a food source. When the competition got really fierce, the struggle for survival turned into a zero-sum game. When the amount of available prey began to dwindle, the great white sharks seemed to come out on top. We speculate that this short overlap between 3.6 and 4 million years ago was enough time for great white sharks to spread throughout the world and displace the megalodon throughout its range, leading it to extinction rather than radiation from space, says renowned scientist Boson Ecker. The hypothesis is intriguing, but the debate over the extinction of the megalodon is unlikely to end there. An expert on ancient sharks told National Geographic that he is not sure that only one species can cause such a reduction. Instead, he suggests that the authors may have overlooked other perpetrators such as the modern tiger shark, which also had territories similar to the juvenile megalodon. Nevertheless, could the megalodon still exist? There is a theory among megafanatics that these creatures are still hiding in the unknown depths of the oceans. There, they silently ponder, biding their time until they come across a failed submarine. Fortunately or unfortunately, this is not the case. It certainly doesn't live in the deep oceans, even though the Discovery Channel talked about such a possibility. If an animal as large as a megalodon still lived in the oceans, we would know about it, assert many scientists. Sharks will leave obvious bite marks on other large marine animals, and their giant teeth will continue to clog the ocean floor by the tens of thousands, not to mention the fact that the megalodon, which lives in warm water, would not be able to survive in the cold water of the depths where it would have a better chance of remaining undetected. So, what has destroyed this giant 